Hi gang, I'm my radar meteorologist Matt Capucci. March 14th marks a special day for nerds and geeks of all kinds, including meteorologists. It's Pi Day, or 314, the closest three-digit approximation of Pi. It's one of the most important and valuable quantities in physics and meteorology. By the way, if you're joining us on YouTube, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. We have tons of great explainers, and with severe weather season coming up, i.e. my bread and butter, there's going to be a lot of cool content you won't want to miss. Pi is irrational, meaning it goes on forever and ever. The more digits you go to, the more precise you get. We can approximate pi as 22 over 7, or 3.1415. If you're feeling like an overachiever today, then here are the first 100 digits of pi. Pi was never really invented nor discovered, but simply better approximated. Ancient Egyptians and Babylonians needed a rough estimate of pi for construction, and Chinese mathematicians pegged it to 7 digits by the year 500 AD. The advent of calculus allowed pi to be calculated to a few hundred digits, enough to be practical in virtually all settings. Simply stated, pi is a ratio between a circle's diameter and its circumference. In other words, how many times a circle's cross-section can be wrapped around its edge. It turns out that number is a little over three times. You can think about it with a pizza. If you order a large pizza that's 16 inches across, how much crust will wrap around it? It would be 16 pi, or roughly 50.3 inches. Pi is vital for physics and meteorology, and as forecasters and scientists, we use it all the time. After all, we live on a globe. Now, let's look at some calculations we can do with pi. For starters, we can solve the area of a circle. That's pi times the circle's radius squared, or pi r squared. If we want the surface area of a sphere, that'd be about 4 pi r squared. So what's the surface area of the Earth? Well, Earth isn't exactly a sphere. In fact, the equator bulges out about 6 kilometers because the Earth is spinning so much. But for our purposes, we can approximate it as a sphere with a radius of 6,371 kilometers, or 3,959 miles. That would give us a surface area of nearly 197 million square miles. Now, North America is only 9.54 million square miles, or barely 4.8% of the Earth's surface. We tend to view ourselves as the center of the universe, but really, we're just a small sliver of planet Earth. Because the Earth is a rotating system and a sphere, pi sort of counts double. Let's talk about one of my favorite things, the Coriolis force. It's the force derived from Earth's rotation. But how does it work? Well, imagine you're on the outside of a merry-go-round. The merry-go-round is spinning. Even though the merry-go-round has a uniform angular speed, meaning the whole thing makes a revolution in unison, you'd have a different azimuthal velocity at different locations. In other words, if you were sitting on the outside, you'll trace a longer path in the same amount of time as if you sat on the inside near the middle. The same premise is true on Earth. Because of that, since the radius of Earth shrinks as you head towards the poles from the equator, pockets of air tend to experience a force that pushes them to the east. As a matter of fact, how dramatic that effect is, is proportional to pi and your latitude. That's why weather systems spin, and barring hurricanes, the most dramatically spinning weather systems are usually found near the poles. Hurricanes spin for the same reasons, but they offer an opportunity to talk about pi once again. They're spinning after all, and they're round, so they have a diameter. But did you know that the chaotic winds and hurricanes actually exist in perfect balance. In the middle, the inward vacuum-like section of the hurricane's low pressure center is exactly balanced by centrifugal force. That's the outward push you feel anytime you drive around a curve in a car. In the equation, you don't see pi, but it's actually hiding inside velocity. We can talk about the same thing with tornadoes too, but pi also becomes useful for scientists working with photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is a process by which you may try to estimate the size, dimensions, or speed of an object through photography. Atmospheric scientists sometimes do this for tornado debris. That requires approximating rotational motion, which you need pi for. Let's look at a couple other examples real quick. You ever heard of weather radar? The radar equation requires pi. That's because we're emitting a pulse which we can envision as a spherical wave. Then a piece of that radiation returns back to the radar, but by then it's spread out some and is diluted. The radar needs to be able to figure out how much comes back, where it's coming from, and what it represents. Anytime you're tracking storms on radar, that comes from this equation. New weather radars are dual pole, or dual polarization. That means two waves go out in opposite planes, one horizontally and one vertically. That allows us to garner information about the shape of whatever the radar hits. This is especially useful during tornado situations. We sometimes see debris show up as weird-looking, jagged, irregular shapes of low correlation. 
That means there's no relationship between the strength of the horizontal and the vertical pulses returned. We see that as a blue splotch. One more thing that requires pi, the sky. Pi is involved in the equation for Rayleigh scattering, which explains why the sky is blue. And if you've ever seen a supernumerary rainbow, i.e. a rainbow with many rainbows inside, there's some pi there too. That's a result of interference between different wavelengths of light. Perfect overlap produces light, whereas two waves shifted by, you guessed it, pi, will produce darkness and cancel out. We call that destructive interference. Pi is everywhere, it literally makes the world go round. So how can you celebrate? Go out tonight, get yourself a pizza, and round out your evening with some apple pie. It's what the ancient mathematicians would have wanted. I'm my radar meteorologist, Matthew Capucci. Follow my radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download my radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa. Xbox and Windows.